Hey guys, what's up? Derek here from Bomb Socks with more Bomb Bites, where we feast upon the words of Christ one bite at a time. So after the last few days where we've talked about the Sermon at the Temple, 3 Nephi 12 through 14, all the ways that we struggle with being perfect, but all of the ways the Savior is going to help us overcome each one of those things. I love those chapters. So the chapter heading of chapter 15, Jesus announces that the law of Moses is fulfilled in him. In fact, you go through about the first 1 to 12 verses and he just like, guys, the law has been fulfilled. I don't want your sacrifices anymore. I want your hearts. He's talked about that before and he's bringing it up here again. Law of Moses is done. You do not need to focus on it. You need to focus on me. And he starts reminding them where they are from, especially when you go down to verse number 12. You're my disciples. You're a light unto this people. He talked about that back in 3 Nephi chapter 12, how you are going to be not just a light to the world, but you're going to be a light to this people who are a remnant of the house of Joseph. And he starts talking about some of these promises here. Behold, this is the land of your inheritance, and the Father hath given it unto you. And not at any time hath the Father given me commandment that I should tell it unto your brethren at Jerusalem. Neither at any time hath the Father given me commandment that I should tell unto them concerning the other tribes of the house of Israel, whom the Father hath led away out of the land. He's just like, this is your land, guys. You have been blessed with this. The folks in Jerusalem don't even really know about it, and they don't really know about you. Although I did explain one thing to them about you you, and this is where we get to verse 17, that other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, meaning he's talking to people in Jerusalem about this, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. John chapter 10, verse 16, every missionary geeks out about that verse, because they will often use it as a discussion point to get into the other sheep, which are the people here in the American continent. Now, what's interesting, you go back to 3 Nephi 15, because of stiff neckedness and unbelief, they understood not my word. He's like, I tried to tell them there are other sheep. They had no idea what I was talking about. Therefore, I was commanded to say no more of the Father concerning this thing, meaning you guys and this land unto them. But verily I say unto you that the Father hath commanded me that I tell it unto you that ye were separated from among them because of their iniquity. That's what happened back in 1 Nephi chapter 1, those early chapters. The people in Jerusalem were being absolute dorks. They were being super disobedient. And so Lehi and his family got out of there and were separated because of the wickedness of the people in Jerusalem, which has now created this group of other sheep here in the American continent. Therefore, it is because of their iniquity that they know not of you. And I love how verse 21, here's Jesus making a good validation. Verily I say unto you, ye are they of whom I said, other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. They understood me not, for they supposed it had been the Gentiles, for they understood not that the Gentiles should be converted through their preaching. We'll talk more about that in the next chapter. And here's the phrase again in verse 23, they understood not. But verse 24, ye both have heard my voice and seen me. Ye are my sheep, ye are numbered among those whom the Father hath given me. So I love that this is the fulfillment of John chapter 10, where the Savior has said, other sheep I have, and you are those other sheep. Now, if you want to get really crazy with that idea, go over to chapter 16 now and look at the first three verses. And verily, verily, I say unto you, you people here, you other sheep, that I have other sheep, which are not of this land, neither of the land of Jerusalem, neither in any parts of that land round about whither I have been to minister. For they of whom I speak are they who have not as yet heard my voice, neither have I at any time manifested my Myself unto them. But I have received a commandment of the Father that I shall go unto them, and that they shall hear my voice, and shall be numbered among my sheep that there may be one fold and one shepherd. Therefore, I go to show myself unto them. Which begs the question, who are the other, other sheep? And how many sheep does the good shepherd have? Well, the answer is all of them. Now again, start thinking about Jesus going other places. Wouldn't it be cool to be able to have other records of those things, of his dealings with them, of his ministry with them? You've heard the Sermon on the Mount. You've heard the Sermon at the Temple. Wouldn't it be cool if there's other examples of that? Another plug for writing stuff down, because wouldn't it be cool if we had those records to be able to really have an added witness, another other testament of Jesus Christ. That would be so cool to be able to see that. But again, Jesus has all of these sheep, every single one of them. When you start really thinking about the 8 billion people plus on the earth right now, 
He knows them. He is mindful of them. And that's just the people that are on the earth right now. You go back to those that have been on the earth. It gets a little mind boggling when you start thinking about all of the sheep. When you start counting those sheep, they are without number. And the nice thing is when you go through the rest of chapter 16, the gospel will be shared with all of them. Jesus wants his message shared with everybody. Now, there's a verse of scripture that I always go to when we start thinking about all of the magnitude of God's children out there, the sheep that are everywhere. I go to Moses chapter 7, where the Lord showed Enoch all of these things, and he had this crazy vision of everything. Moses 7, verse number 30, And were it possible that men could number the particles of the earth, yea, millions of earths like this, it would not be a beginning to the number of thy creations. Thy curtains are stretched out still, and yet thou art there, and thy bosom is there, and also thou art just. Thou art merciful and kind forever. Here is where our finite minds start to get a little blown a little bit. How's your head doing right now with trying to count the number of sheep that are out there? And the beautiful thing about it is he knows every single one of them. God knows you and he knows your need. Now you go back to that very beginning where the Savior did teach that original doctrine back in John chapter 10, how other sheep I have which are not of this fold. You go to the previous two verses before that, John 10, 14 and 15. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. With all of this in mind, you now get to see the very personal nature of the Good Shepherd. This weekend, my friends, we got general conference. If you want to see the personal nature of the Good Shepherd, ask a question, a very specific, a very personal question, questions of the soul. And as you ask that question, as you ask that question, and you watch general conference, and you listen intently to the messages that are given, you will find, as Elder Holland said, you're years ago, a very personal prophetic epistle just for you to show you how well this good shepherd who has sheep and worlds, millions without number, how he knows you. That to me is such a cool concept, how the savior of millions and millions and millions knows my name and he knows your name. You will see it this weekend as you open up your ears and open up your heart to general conference and you will feel the very personal nature of the good shepherd. And we get to see that over the next several chapters in the Book of Mormon as well. I am grateful for these chapters. I know that they are true. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for subscribing and thanks for sharing these messages. We're so grateful as always that you do that. If you like what you see, click the like button. It gets the message out there. You got to go check out our amazingly comfortable gospel themed socks at bombsocks.com. You guys have a great weekend. Enjoy General Conference. We'll catch you next week. Take care. Godspeed. We'll see you. Bye-bye.